uh, is it is it working? Everyone can hear? Yeah. So uh, IOTA of IOT. It's uh, it's my uh, talk's name. Like I named it. Uh, there's a, there are two reasons why I named it. Like one is because IOTA is one of the letters in Greek, and I'll be talking all about basics of IOT, Raspberry Pi, and Pi beacons. Okay, and uh, the second reason it it sounds very cool. So I'm Prabhanshu Atri. Uh, I'm a software development engineer at Zomato, and uh, from India. So uh, I'll be talking about basics of IOT, uh, what's IOT, what's of inter inter Internet of Things, Raspberry Pi, and beacons and what I did with beacons, a little bit about that. So what's IoT? IoT is connecting every device's world uh, around you, like the chairs, the cameras, the lights, and everything connecting to internet, so that you can have context anywhere and everywhere, so that you can get connected and get control of them. You can control the things from your office, the things at, at your home from your office. That's the IoT, that's the Internet of Things, connecting everything. And uh, like it started in 1982 when like, uh, at CMU, some, uh, some people uh, connected the uh, Coke vending machine to, uh, to Internet, and they can see the inventory of that machine. And then in 2012 and 2016, it just like, escalated the process. Like everything got trying uh, to get connected. Because analytics came in, big data came in, and new things came up. So this is just an example how like how you can get uh, get your fridge connected and it can tell you that you need milk. The, it's not there. <laughs> so uh, there were three three phases, three uh, waves. Like initially, it started with the electronics uh, or consumer-based electronics because uh, if you if you enable the uh, consumer-based electronics and connect them to the internet, the the consumer will buy it, and that's where uh, the industry comes in. Like industry. Uh, brought these things to their consumer base in uh, devices. The second wave, when uh, when they found out that uh, these things can help really in industry as well, like in inventory management and everything, then they started uh, connecting these things to their uh, devices at the industry level. And the third thing, third wave is when everything everything is connected. So I guess Singapore is somewhere between second and third wave because they have almost everything uh, got connected and they are working on this. So it's it's kind it's becomes a little bit creepy because if your devices are connected to internet and if you can control it from somewhere else, somebody else can also do it. And if you are using third party platform or like um, sub, let's say Google's platform, then Google can look it into a data, and that's where it gets creepy and you get advertisement based on your context. So so <laughs> the next next thing is how you can start with the. IoT, Internet of Things, because it's all hardware, and not everybody has the knowledge of hardware. I'm a, I'm a software engineer, and I have less um, knowledge about the hardware, because that's where I get messed up. So I started with two things. Like, uh, there, were, there are two boards, Arduino board and Raspberry Pi. They are just, just devices here. So this is a small computer, and Arduino is a less powerful computer than this. I'm showing you, I'm deassembling this. Yeah. So it, this is the super, like a small computer. Uh, you just connect your sc screen here. This is a HDMI port. And, uh, and this is the like everything here. So these are the pins. You can connect your sensors, how you can detect things around. You can connect your USBs, LAN. And this is the Raspberry Pi 3. So Pi 2 didn't have the Wi Fi and everything. Now this has Bluetooth as well as Wi Fi. So for $35, you can get your own computer and play around. Because uh, get, starting with a, like learning with computer, like a laptop, you won't get uh, that much knowledge because you are not building everything on your own. But with Raspberry Pi, you are assembling it and you are doing things, and it won't break. Even if it breaks, you won't lose much money. So that's the concept of Raspberry Pi. And you must have seen, uh, how many of you have seen the Mr. Robot series? Mr. Robot. Yeah. like. You must have seen the Raspberry Pi. It's there. So, the the protagonist, what it, it does is he programs the Raspberry Pi, goes to a uh, like power station, and just assembles it there, and then he can hack the system right away. So that's where you can see the Raspberry Pi as well in work. <laughs> so it's small hacks you can work on. So, the next thing is uh, about sensors. Now you have a computer. How do you connect the real world with the computer world? 
It's just not computer to computer, machine to machine communication. It's real world to com com uh, machine communication. So sensors come in and other things come in. So let's, let's say you are blindfolded and you're walking. How will you know that this is a Newton Hall or this is a Dalton Hall? You will, not, you will not know. You need someone to tell you that go right and then do this because you are blindfolded, you cannot see. Your phone in your pocket is feeling the same way right now because without GPS or even with the GPS, it doesn't know what all is there around this place. So if it doesn't know what all is there, it, it, the device cannot help you that much. So that's where Beacon comes in. So it's a BLE Bluetooth uh, low energy devices. I'll show you one. There are many things here. So these are the beacons. They are small devices, Bluetooth devices. What they do is they, they throw on, they throw unique IDs around you and they don't need connections to, for your devices to get connected. So if I don't need connection, I'll need no, less power. So th they are like the lighthouse. They're just beaming the light out. They're just beacon of light <laughs> exclusively for machines. So they tell the devices that this is the unique ID and you are here. So if the device knows, uh, your application in the device knows that this is the unique ID assigned to this particular place, the device knows where you are. And it said it has interesting implementations uh, worldwide, like in, in every industry. So in Germany, they are really using it for uh, e-commerce and com commercial, like you go into shop and you know what this product is. So what if like you go and you pick up, pick up a shoe and the, your device, the application knows you have picked the shoe and it's near you. So they keep on popping you, giving you offers with it. So you are getting contextual advertisement as well. And then, uh, uh, Google, came, uh, this was started with the iBeacons. Apple started with iBeacons. That's, that's where it was introduced and Google came up with different things. Uh, this is the Eddystone protocol. Uh, Eddy, this is the Eddystone URL uh, uh, logo. So they came up with Eddystone protocols. Those protocols, what they do is, they, they're a little bit different from iBeacon. They have other thing as well, like uh, pop, throwing out URLs. Just a page URL, nothing else. Instead of giving a unique ID. Because when you are giving a unique ID, it's a hash, it's a Ja, like, it's just random letters. And uh, as a person, you won't know what's this. And device knows it. You need an application for that. But with uh, Edistone URLs, your Android devices can know this is the URL. I need to redirect the user to this place if he wants. So right now, my uh, beacons are um, like throwing two URLs. One of them is uh, to this presentation. No, one of them is to a repository and one of the URL goes to my blog. So, you're way over at this point. Okay. Do we have any other speakers in the room? I could do something else. Okay, but keep, keep going, but. Okay, I, I'll just so It's supposed to be five minutes, you're well over that. Sorry, sorry. So, uh, right now, if uh, you have um, the nearby enabled, it shows you URLs on your Android devices. You can right away go to it and visit things and everything. And then uh, what I did is, these beacons cost you money, like uh, these three beacons, uh, it costed me $100 in India, plus tax customs. So while I was, uh, while these were in transit, I started developing a, uh, a package for Python where you can convert your Linux machine into a beacon right away. You don't need anything else. You just need a uh, Linux machine with a beacon, uh, with, a, with a Bluetooth device. With a Bluetooth, uh, device. So uh, it works with the Raspberry Pi, it works with your system, it works with everything. It's called Pi Beacon, and these are the repositories. And the code was merged with Google, and they have like they have the code, but the upgraded version is with this with this URL, and that's what I did. And it's a simple command like uh, pipe install Pi Beacon, and you have the Pi Beacon. Pi, be Pi Beacon minus minus help, you get the all the help. How you can uh, enable the beacon and how can you get started? That's it.